This week in Linux gaming news, we'll talk about how Suyu was removed from GitLab and what they're doing next. Plus, the Orange Pi Neo's pricing gets revealed. And what new features have greeted us in the Steam Deck beta this week? Let's get right into the news. So last week we talked about how Suyu, the cheeky little yuzu fork, had a new release up over on GitLab. Well, by the time that video went live, it had been removed from GitLab because it's a fork of a quote, previously DMCA'd repository. So Yuzu lost access to their GitLab account. Lots of comments on my previous video were saying rip Suyu, and because the internet is full of unoriginal degenerates, there was also a few this video aged like fine milk comments. But here's the thing, fellas, GitLab and GitHub are not the only places that you can host your code. In fact, GitLab is open source and you can host your own version of it on your servers, far outside the reach of GitLab and GitHub's DMCA authority. And that's pretty much what Suyu's devs are doing right now. Princess Twilight Sparkle on Suyu's Discord said, quote, I have a response from our legal team. We will need to use git.suyu.dev for the foreseeable future. Getting our GitLab back most likely needs us to go through a lawsuit, which is going to be very difficult. We need to adapt slash rewrite RCI for the new Git. Thanks for your understanding. So remember kids, publishing your stuff to other people's websites is not an exercise of your free speech. Self-hosting is the only method to guarantee your freedom online. Anything else is a rental. Just as a quick public service announcement, EA has vowed to ruin their game for Steam Deck gamers, and the deadline for ruination is April 2024, which it's coming up. Quote, As part of our ongoing efforts to create a safe and fair experience for all players, we're transitioning Battlefield 5 in April of 2024. They go on to lie and say, When we transition over to EA Andy Cheat, you won't notice anything different when logging in and playing, but this transition will enable our teams to be better equipped to find and remove players that don't play fair. The fact is, EA's anti-cheat is a kernel mode anti-cheat tool. That places it firmly in the realm of malware, and therefore it should be illegal, yet somehow complacent gamers the world over have decided that they're okay with it. The fact is, Electronic Arts has absolutely zero interest in supporting open source operating systems because it doesn't give them the power that they seek. The inclusion of EA anti Cheat in other titles has precluded Linux gamers from being able to play such games, where they had been able to play them before EA anti Cheat was added. This is yet another prime example of why you should never buy an Electronic Arts game. Okay, next up we've got Humble's Back with a Vengeance, the best of Boomer Shooters bundle. That's a heck of a title, but this pack includes seven high quality games, including Ultra Kill, which is verified. Turbo Overkill, which is verified, Forgive Me Father 2, which is playable, Deadlink, which is playable, Proteus, which is playable, Quake 2, which is playable, and Postal Brain Damage, which is verified. Now, I'm excited about this pack of titles for Quake 2 alone, because this is the Night Dive remaster, and I have been a huge fan of Night Dive for, I mean, as long as I can remember. But there's also Ultra Kill, which I've heard nothing but great things about. It's a frantic bit crush boomer shooter with over the top violence that borders on slapstick and it's got a 98% positive rating on Steam so you know it's got to be good. You can use the links below to pick up this bundle for yourself. As always, picking up these bundles uh, helps charity but it also helps the show if you use my affiliate links below. And if you use my links, thank you. So for the last few weeks, we've been talking about the Orange Pi Neo, which is an exciting new handheld coming from Orange Pi, shipping with Manjaro Gaming Edition on it. Now this week, the official Manjaro Linux account on X tweeted new details about the device. The Neo will have two SKUs. The entry level tier comes with the Ryzen 7 7840U, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, and it will only cost an impressive 499 US dollars. The higher tier model will have the Ryzen 7 8840U, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of storage. The higher tier model will be $599. Now this is excellent work by the Manjaro and Orange Pi teams. I'm really excited to get my hands on one of these to try it out. Hopefully we won't be waiting too much longer as they have apparently officially launched the device in China. So what do you think about the Orange Pi Neo? Feed the engagement algorithm and leave me a comment below. 
I'm excited to hear your thoughts about this. We're gonna be covering this thing along with other Linux first devices. So make sure you like that smash button. It's the best way to tell YouTube you wanna stay up to date with all the content we're releasing here twice a week. You can also get subscribed if that's more your speed. And if you're tired of YouTube's algorithm dictating what videos you should watch next, you can use the links below to head over to my streaming site, subscribeto.me. It's a PeerTube instance that I'm running myself, and I've peered it with a couple other really great Linuxy creators. You can subscribe to it using your existing Fediverse accounts, including on Macedon, PixelFed, or even a PeerTube instance, uh, and it's all completely free. All right, now let's get back to the video. So recently, a few people have noticed that Discord has added Wayland support. This is excellent news, but they've had it for a little while. The question here is when is Wayland screen sharing support going to include audio? The thing is, Discord screen sharing on Linux has left something to be desired for a while now. But what does Wayland screen sharing add to Discord? Well, first, it provides a native UI to control exactly what gets shared. This gives users more control and isolates the system more. But also, in the future, Wayland screen sharing might also enable screen sharing from game mode on the Steam Deck. Now, according to Advaith on X, apparently their team hopes to get Wayland screen share support this year. This is awesome to see, and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. All right, lastly, let's talk about these two decently sized beta updates for the Steam Deck. So on March 22nd, we saw many updates. Uh, first, they fixed corrupt fonts showing during early startup in Thai languages. They, they fixed inverted axes when using setup input devices. They reverted changes to default conversion style as player space to gyro to mouse. They added DualSense and DualShock Gyro Enable, Disable, and Toggle Touch Center. Various other fixes for Steam input. And they added a fix for Quick Settings Enable Grip Toggle. For remote play, they improved recovery from network disconnections before starting Steam. And for the Steam Cloud, they fixed cases where files from one Steam account would be overwritten by files from another Steam account if the first account had logged in but not played the game yet on the device. And finally, for Linux, they fixed a situation where Steam would attempt to execute the Windows version of a title without using Steam Play. Then on March 27th, we saw another decently sized update. They reduced network traffic at startup and reconnect. They fixed support alert messages, intermittently producing an error at startup. They fixed sometimes not being able to access the Steam Family Management Profile page. They fixed a case where the SD card library would not be detected if added via desktop mode. They fixed some applications not appearing in library when shared by a family member. And finally, in desktop mode, they fixed a regression causing Steam News Button to not work. Overall, these are modestly sized and come with a few interesting fixes for the, uh, the Steam Deck experience. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts. What features are missing from Steam, uh, from the Steam Deck even? Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's gonna do it for now though. Make sure you check out my next video uh, as well as my D&D uh, &D campaign that I'm doing with my family. It's a pretty good time. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I wanna thank my patrons and my YouTube members for supporting this show as they do. Uh, you guys make all the difference and I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you so much. If you want to help support the show, you can use the links below. And with all that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.